All right, let's jump on to the next news here. Uh, so how Amazon sellers are navigating capacity constraints. With holiday demand on the horizon, Amazon sellers are contending with inventory delays and storage issues, especially at West Coast warehouses. As Amazon reroutes inventory and adjustments, adjust fees, many sellers are turning to costly alternatives like air freight or third-party logistics to maintain stock levels. For those reliant on Amazon's warehousing and distribution service, these bottlenecks create added pressure to manage inventory. Sellers are paying extra to ensure availability as going out of stock during peak season could harm their ranks and sales. And uh, I can confirm because I tried to create an AWD shipment uh, Wednesday for a brand that we work with. And it wasn't even that big of a shipment. I think it was a few hundred items and it would not let me send to any location, East Coast, Central or West. Um, they were all full. So I ended up having to just send it direct to Amazon and pay the placement fees so that we could send it as a, a single pack uh, pallet. Yeah. 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 Eric, what are you seeing in terms of uh, shipping products in? Well, I, I stay, me and my business and, and the people I consult with, we always recommend staying away from AWD just because I feel like it gives too much control to Amazon. I mean, I want to be in control of my inventory. So we, we sell, we send everything in using either Amazon Freight or our own private carriers. And we're trying to get that inventory. in. fortunately for me, I'm on the East Coast. So I haven't experienced the delays as most of our inventory isn't shipped to the West. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of sellers in the West Coast that they're getting diverted shipments and they live in California and they got to send inventory to Indiana or New York or New Jersey, which can get very costly, very mm -hmm. costly to send a few pallets or even a truckload across the country. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. And I, I've noticed that I have been sending to almost all warehouses that I've never shipped to before. Yeah. Uh, and so it's I'm interesting. It's interesting because when you, um, with AWD aside for just regular shipments you're putting through using the seller central API or whatever third party you may integrate with, like they have you split it right to let's say five different fulfillment centers. And if you look at the, the tracking of where they end up sending it, they ship it right back to where you sent it from. So it's oh. like, why am I shipping it to California when they're just shipping it right back to New Jersey for me? It's, it yeah, makes no yep. sense. Yeah, you see that happen a lot. I've seen articles from that where people have tracked the shipments uh, in bulk, and that happens a lot. For some reason, you send it to a far off location, and half of it comes right back to where you sent it from. Um, from what I understand, though, in in reading other information on logistics, is Amazon is kind of redone how their warehouses are set so instead of sending uh directly to fba fulfillment centers they've got a lot more uh like regional centers in between and then um i believe national distribution points on top of that so it will go to either a regional or national distribution point and then it can go out from there to other regionals and then from other regionals to the final fulfillment centers. So sometimes your products might be on, you know, two, three, four, five different journeys before it gets to where it's actually going to be sold. You, you know what that makes me think of? It's slightly off, off topic here is that every time your package has to be handled, the percentage <laughs> chance of it getting damaged goes up exponentially. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if we're going to see a lot. So most of you know that I, that I think you all know that I've been in the review business for quite some time now. And w one of the most common reviews, negative reviews that we would get removed are product arrived broken. Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if we're going to see a, an increase in the number of critical reviews that brands get on their products because their products are arriving broken because it's being handled five times rather than two, you know, it's probably more than five times, but 10 times rather than two or three or four. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It really, it really feels like Amazon has also set up kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario here. Yeah. So I want to, I want to piggyback on what Eric said that um, 
thinking that you can rely on Amazon for everything is a is a bad strategy. And yeah. I I have annoyed people that I work with for years by telling them that in Q4 you've got to have a merchant fulfilled strategy, whether you're using a 3PL doing it for you, doing it yourself out of your basement. I don't care how you're doing it. Yeah. Because you cannot trust Amazon in fourth quarter. They have amazing logistics and they still blow it every fourth quarter just yeah. because of volumes. It's rough. And so, you know, I know that it's really attractive, like this AWD thing, it's going to solve all these problems. Last year, I had my stuff at the warehouse. It didn't get received for four weeks. I mean, we've all had these things happen to us. Sure. And so you 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 get frustrated and you buy in and they're offering rock bottom prices right now to get you addicted. They're yep. just like you're the dealer down the street. You know, they want to get you just like AGL, right? Global Logistics. Yep. It's like a quarter the price of your other options. So they get you in there and they get you hooked and you you let go of your vendors and then you're stuck with them. And then these things happen. So I I, I have a, a couple of different friends who really smart. Um, they're using the AWD solution for a portion of inventory. Then they're still shipping direct with UPS to warehouses. And then they also have product at a 3PL. And I, I think this is one of those scenarios we should all learn from that diversifying where your stuff lives for fourth quarter is the key to making sure you can actually get it sold. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, from what I've heard as well, now I don't ship typically uh, full truck loads. I'm usually doing LTL, uh, but full truck load, if you're able to do a full truck load is still uh, doing very well. It's one of the cheapest ways to ship into Amazon because you can basically get usually a single delivery point and not have to pay the, um, the fees the inbound placement fees mm -hmm. to do that. And the rates for a full truck load compared to LTL. I mean, an LTL shipment for say four pallets might be four or $500 and a full truck load potentially could be like six, seven, $800, depending yeah. on how far you got to get it to go. And that's what a full truck load, I believe is 26 pallets, 24 yeah. pallets. Yeah. You could squeeze so, 30 in there, but the yeah. average will be like 24 to 26. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're I, able, the full truck load is the way to go or maybe work with other sellers to try to get to a full truck load if it's possible as well. Yeah, we, we see that. We send about eight to 10 full truck loads a week to Amazon fulfillment centers. And I think it's even worth it for if you're a smaller seller, if you have six or seven pallets, it's worth it to get the dedicated full truck because then you'll most likely get a live unload. Uh, mm -hmm. Because when you're doing LTL and you have shared shared products and carriers, especially if it's an Amazon partnered carrier, they have no problem parking that truck in their in their warehouse parking lot for two weeks until they unload it. But if it's a mm -hmm. live unload, it has to be unloaded immediately. And how do you how do you determine? So you're saying that if it's LTL, that they'll happily drop it. But if it's a full truckload, it's live unload no matter what. Or is there some other scenario that you need to know? Well, well, I mean, what, and this is why we don't typically use partnered carrier. We prefer to use our own carrier or Amazon Freight because Amazon Freight will have dedicated lanes with guarantee, guaranteed live unloads. Oh. Um, but when you use a non-partnered carrier, Amazon doesn't own the truck, so they can't leave. They got to get it in and out. The driver I see. has to come in for their appointment and leave. Got it. That makes sense. That's in, uh, That's interesting. Okay. So, and what is the cost difference between using the two, roughly? Uh, so, right now, with one of our private carriers for a full truckload about 200 miles south of us, it's about $450. And what would Amazon charge for roughly the same? Uh, for uh, Through Amazon Freight, it would be similar, but five to $600 through Amazon Freight. So, so no matter what, e e even if it were, even if it were a little more expensive to do it through Amazon, the fact that it's going to be unloaded could save you gargantuan amounts of money in terms of potential losses if they were to park that truck, which I've absolutely heard of many times. And it's happened to my inventory before on, on an LTL as well. 